Hey guys, I see some amazing people in the chat already. I am so glad that my laptop is fixed so I can talk to you all not on the floor because that was the most uncomfortable live stream ever. But I promised you guys I would be there to do the giveaway, so I did. Doesn't matter how comfortable I am, as long as you guys get what you want. All right, I got a five, five, five. Thank you, Vision, and hello. I haven't talked to you in a little while. Been very, very busy at home. And then Marco, hello. My Renaissance grandma, hi, sweetheart. Hudson, that right there, we're related somehow, I'm telling you. We hit it off so well. Triple Threat Firearms, hi. Grateful Preps, New Jersey, hey, welcome. I think I got everybody that is here right now. Oh, Terry Johnson. Hi, Terry. All right. So as you guys know, I couldn't do any videos. I couldn't do any um, streams. I couldn't do anything because my laptop was kaput. And it went down um, very, very quickly in the middle of a live. And if you were in that live, I had to jump back up on my cell phone which was quite strange, but um, it was the only way I could have closed. Otherwise, my life would have went on forever. So while I was gone, my husband and I had our five-year wedding anniversary. And I want to thank everyone for wishing me and my husband um, a happy anniversary and blessings for many years to come. Uh, I truly appreciate that. Um, it doesn't seem like it's been five years. It's gone by so, so fast. Um, but it's been an amazing five years. We've been through a lot in this five years, that especially with the pandemic and uh, all the chaos around the world. And uh, a lot of families it's ripped apart, but it's pulled my husband and I closer together. Um, so during our anniversary, we were going to go camping. We are not your traditional couple where we like to go out for fancy dinners. As a matter of fact, on our uh, actual wedding anniversary day, we agreed that we were going to uh, go to Taco Bell. So we went to Taco Bell and um, tore it up. It was so good. But one of the things that we love to do is out of our hot sauce packets, we like to um, just put all kinds of sentences together uh, to each other. Um, so we sat there and we did that and had our tacos and uh, crunch wraps and all that good stuff and chow down and um, decided that um, since Hudson was doing um, Hudson Valley Prepping and Survival. If you don't know, he is in the chat. And he did a, um, a camp out and yard sale. And it was um, up in upstate New York, uh, way up there. Like I probably could have thrown a ball and hit Canada because it felt like um, it was cold enough that we could have been in Canada. But uh, we figured if we we're going to go camping, we might as well uh, make it a memorable one. So we decided we were going to pack up. We were going to try to leave on Friday morning. Well, that did not work. Friday morning came around and we went to hitch up our trailer. And as you all know, we have recently been hit by a hurricane. And then it rained almost every day after. So our Jeep got stuck in our backyard because we have um, clay mud in our yards here. So it was stuck um, till I got home at about, oh, I want to say we got it out at about nine o'clock at night on Friday night. We were planning on being there um, in New York Friday night, and we didn't get to leave the house until Friday night because uh, the, the Jeep, I think, was halfway to China, to be honest. It was so deep in the mud. But we ended up getting it out. We stayed up until midnight and we packed up um, the truck and we packed up the trailer and we dropped our two daughters, which are our puppies, in case y'all don't know, to the mother-in-laws so that they could spend the weekend with the mother-in-law. And we decided to go straight through to New York. So we got up in the morning and um, we planned to get on leaving in the morning. And some stuff happened where we had to wait till the afternoon. But we got out um, in the afternoon on Saturday. On Saturday? 
Anyways, we, we left later than we wanted. No, we had to have gotten out early. Anyways, I'm getting my days mixed up, but that's not the point. So we've packed everything up, and um, I had the directions from Mike at Hudson Valley, and he warned me to not take um, this specific parkway, and I can't ever remember the name of it. I'm sure he'll, he'll drop it, um, but he said, whatever you do, don't take this parkway. Okay, great. So we GPS it. We want to avoid all tolls because if y'all don't know, there is some tolls in New York that if you are not a resident with a fast pass, it is a $150 toll. And I was not paying that for a toll. If that money is going into any toll for anybody's roads, it's going to be the ones here because the ones here are trash and they need to fix them. They, yeah, that's it. The Taconic Parkway. And so we get um, halfway through to our destination, and uh, we realize when we did a stop to get gas that someone had stole the tag off of our Jeep. So we were driving with expired tags because they ripped the most current one off. And we were like, okay, well, as long as we have our current registration, we should be fine. They can look it up in their system. Well, guess what, guys? We didn't have our current registration. We had the year prior. I was like, I know we paid it. I know we paid it. So I pulled it up, went to the, the city website, and like screenshotted the receipt to show that we paid our registration and our taxes in case we got pulled over since we had expired tags. Um, the other thing is our trailer does not have license plates. And the reason for this is because if you live in South Carolina, it's not required. So we never got plates for our trailer because we didn't need them. We didn't have to, it's optional. Um, if we were to get them, it was gonna cost us $158 to get license plates just to take it out of state. So we took that chance. We didn't get the license plates. So we already have three things against us for this trip. No license plates, expired plate on the truck, and no current registration. Like, you know what? I don't care. We're going. We are making this trip no matter what. So we get up there and we get almost um, to our destination. And my GPS kept rerouting. Every few miles, it just kept rerouting. Well, it's rerouted one time when we were super close and it was like uh take the next exit so i did i took the next exit guess what it was the taconic parkway i get right around the roundabout on this parkway and i see this big sign taconic parkway no trailers no ca uh, campers uh, all this stuff and i'm like oh my gosh and my husband's like, what's the matter? I said, this is the parkway we are not supposed to be taking. Mike told us, whatever we do, don't take this parkway. So we get to the bottom. I'm thinking, okay, well, we'll just somehow turn around and get off of it. Well, once we made that exit, there was no turnaround. There was one way and you were on the parkway and you couldn't get off of it. So I'm like, well, I wonder why we can't take it. We go a little bit and um there's this really low bridge. It had to be probably maybe 10 to 12 feet, a really old bridge, like made out of brick and stone. So I was like, okay, well, we can make it under it. Maybe, maybe it's because of this bridge. We're not supposed to be on it. And then I was thinking, while we're on this parkway, we'll only be on it for a little while. Well, we're on this parkway for 26 miles. And uh, I think the speed limit was like 40, 45. So we were on this parkway for a long, long time. And uh, a little bit down the road, there's a police officer that has somebody already pulled over. So I'm like, okay, cool. They're preoccupied. Let's go. We keep going. We did not get stopped one time, even though we had all these things against us on the way up there. Not one time. I had uh, one time where two state police went flying up on my butt on the interstate and I thought I was going to get pulled then 
and they flew around me and took off. So God was watching over us on that trip because we definitely should have gotten pulled over and we, we didn't. Um, everywhere we went, it, it was, it was crazy. So anyway, we get up to um, the yard sale and the cookout, or cookout, camp out. There was a cookout too. I'll tell you about that too, but that's coming up. Um, and the drive up there was so pretty. It was, the, the colors were stunning. And I miss having falls like that. The trees were orange and red and gold and like a almost like a deep purple or deep maroon they were just stunning just rolling hills of these colors and when we got up there um, i said this i don't know if y'all have watched uh mike's live stream on hudson valley prepping and survival when we actually did the live stream while we were there but i all my life thought that New York was completely flat with skyscrapers. I had no idea that there were any type of hills or mountains in New York at all. So I was completely, completely blown away by how beautiful it was up in his area. And um, I, I, it's somewhere that I could live. I mean, I could totally live wherever there's mountains. And, and most of you know, I want to end up in Tennessee for that reason. I love the mountains. Um, I'm a mountain girl. I love it. I love camping and hiking and so forth. So as we pull in, um, Mike spots us right away, which I, I knew he would. I told him he would know us when he sees us and I'm not going to tell anyone here why, but he spotted us right away. And um, he came out and he took us to the camping area where everyone was. And, um, it was, it was great. There was already people there that had stayed the night before a few people. Um, some of Mike's close friends had stayed there Friday night and, um, everyone was spread out. There was probably a total of about 60 people there this, this weekend. Um, not everyone stayed, but quite a few did. Uh, but there was such a big area that, we were not on top of each other. We were so spread out um, that it, it didn't bother anyone. We all had our space, um, which was really cool. But then when it came time to sit around the fire or time to eat or have coffee or whatever, everybody came out and gathered together like a huge family reunion. And it was, it was just, it was amazing to to feel that welcomed by people that I've never met. Some of them had no idea who I was. And some of them, um, like Mike, we hit it off just as if we've known each other all of our lives. I, I told Mike on the last night, I felt like I was sitting here with my cousin the whole time, that we were family, that we grew up together, that that it, it was just so comfortable. Um, and uh, fuzzy, fuzz, fuzzed pork. I did. Um, I did actually take a different way home, but I had to do it a, a interesting way because my GPS didn't want to cooperate. Um, and I'll tell you about that one too. So uh, we get up to um, this big building where it's been converted for this. It's usually a paintball. Um, it's called the Hornet's Nest. Uh, paintball, um, paintball park, I want to say. Um, but Mike and some of the guys had clean, they, they spent days, um, that Livingston was one of them, um, that spent days cleaning this building up, um, so that they could set up for this prepper yard sale. And, um, they, they did a wonderful job. It, they, there was stuff everywhere and anything that you could have possibly wanted um, for camping, for prepping, uh, for survival is was there. I mean, from air, uh, not airsoft, paintball, airsoft. Um, I think there was airsoft stuff. 
um, knives, camping stuff, uh, military style stuff. There was gas masks. I mean, anything that you're missing from your collection was at this yard sale. And it wasn't like your normal yard sale where you would go in and uh, there'd be like little stickers on everything for prices. You would go in and you would um, either offer something uh, or you would um, ask them what they would you know, like for, or they actually were bartering things. So if you had something they needed and they had something you needed, you could swap if it was a fair trade, um, which was really cool. You just don't have yard sales like that anymore um, where you can barter things anymore. Um, when I got up there, I met some of the more or more of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. And um, one of them was Old Mutt, who that man could probably teach you anything. He has so much experience and he's just good hearted. He is absolutely a blessing in disguise here on earth. He was so welcoming and so um, heartwarming to be around and um, very giving. And uh, he just, he made sure um, that we were also made to feel comfortable, which was great. And um, they had they had a table in the middle that um, people could throw stuff on that uh, they had the like free stuff, and um, they asked me if there was anything in particular I was looking for, and I was like gloves. I need gloves. This southern girl went up to New York, where it was cold as could be, with no gloves and a hoodie, which wasn't very smart. I, I did have my jacket, but it was still in the trailer. One of the people that were up there, Outlaw Jackson, another person who will very much stay close to my heart for a long time. Um, I feel like we've been family for years as well. That man gave me his gloves right out of his pocket. And it was the most kind gesture I have seen in a long, long time because people are not kind anymore. And everyone at this camp out was so kind and so amazing. And just, it was great. It was like you were family, even though you just met. And it, it was a, a huge, it made a huge difference in my life to go up there. You Y'all don't even realize how much it really touched me to go up there. I talked about it the whole way back of how, I felt like I was at home. I felt like I was at home with everybody up there. I heard some amazing stories and there were other people there that um, really were teaching. I mean, we learned, we had someone come and teach us about uh, where we are lacking in solar um, and kind of dumbed it down for us because we don't know anything about solar other than the basics. And they explained to us where we were lacking and how to fix it in terms that we could understand without belittling us or, you know, making us feel stupid. It, it was really awesome to be taught by people that knew way more. And you had other people there that were learning how to make fires and learning how to make char cloth. And everyone was willing to teach somebody something. Um, without making anyone feel stupid. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got the fan going and it's drying my throat out. Um, you also had, um, let me think, there was so much and there's so much I want to tell you. Um, you had different different people that were at different levels of prepping. And when I, when I talk about different levels, I talk about some people literally were just starting. And I know a lot of people say, you know, are, are out there saying it's too late. 
I don't ever think it's too late. It's never too late to prep. So for these brand new preppers to come out there to try to learn from other preppers, and there were some very, very experienced preppers out there, I'm talking 30 plus years to be able to teach the newer preppers or the more uh, or the less experienced preppers how to do things because they've already done trial and error. It was a huge, diverse group of different levels of prepping. And everybody came together. Everybody came together. There was no issues, no drama, no anything um, at this event, which you would think with that many people, something or somebody would have been out of line somewhere. And it just didn't happen. Nobody even had any thoughts of even trying to cause any problems because everyone was so comfortable. And then you had different uh, types of campers there. So you had, <clears throat> I have to turn off this fan. One second, guys, I'm so sorry. <coughs> okay. You had different um, levels of um, campers there. So you had some that brought trailers to sleep in. You had some that slept in tents. You had some bush crafters there. And you had some that actually had their hammocks in trees. And it was, you had some that were on the ground and then you had some that were up in the mountains. So you had all levels of everybody in, in all their experiences, whether it be camping or prepping or um, survival, there was all levels from zero to 1 million. They, they were so knowledgeable. It blew me away. I learned quite a few things. Um, I was able to teach a few things which was really awesome too. Um, I love helping people. I love meeting people, um, especially people that uh, I, I bond with instantly because I don't, I don't make friends. I have acquaintances, but I don't make friends easily. It's very hard for me to make friends and trust people. Um, but when I do make friends, they are friends for life. And um, I take care of them as much as I can. And um, I just, I keep them around because they mean a lot to me and I try to help them. Um, Greenleaf. Um, if I remember right, Greenleaf, you had the e-bike, right? Greenleaf was there. Um, I'm pretty sure he had the e-bike, but I'm going to tell you about his trip too. Um, talking about a whole bunch of um, diverse groups. Um, Okay, so Greenleaf. Greenleaf had the e-bike. This man came 40 miles on an e-bike to be at this event. That to me, kudos, kudos to him because that to me is amazing because it was, um, it was like 67 degrees during the day, but in the evenings, it was between, I think it was between 38 and 41 degrees. And then you are on an e-bike that's going like 40, 45 miles an hour. That man has got some really huge cojones to be able to do that. And I give him great kudos for coming that far on an e-bike. And he would get there and he would solar charge it. And then he would take it home. And if I remember hearing correctly, that was not his first trip. Um... Yep, he lost 20% of his power to the cold, and it was cold. Um, I did get a little bit of uh, harassment on how bundled I was being from the South, but it was all in fun and games. Yep, his second trip. Second trip. Okay. So, yeah, he, he it was cool. He had all his little sacks on his bike, plus he had his backpack. He, he was ready. He was ready. That, that man could bug out if he needed to uh, very quickly. He knew what he was doing. It was great. Um, we met some people that uh, had some great, great backstories. Um, some people that um, at one point were in a dark, dark place and met some amazing people like I did that brought them out of it, which I think is great. Um, it, it's I, I can't even tell you. Mike had this um, this barbecue truck there too, um, a food truck that was all barbecue where they smoked 
um, pulled pork and um, oh, I can't remember the other meat, brisket and brisket right there on site. And um, he had homemade pickled peppers and um, spicy pickles and um walking tacos and he cooked everything right there from scratch for us to eat so that um if we didn't want to cook we didn't have to and my husband ordered a half a pound of pulled pork and it must have been amazing because he inhaled his food and my husband does not eat fast but he inhaled this pulled pork. And after a half a pound of pulled pork, he wanted more. The flavors of the meat and in even the walking taco, walkie taco, walking taco, it was all great. But the taco was like it had pulled chicken instead of um, ground beef. And uh, it was it was so good. It was so good. And I'm so glad because I really didn't want to cook when we got there. So I was really, really glad that was there. Um, then at the end of the night, everybody came out of the woodworks and I'm talking about all areas of this mountain to get together and sit around the fire and talk. And everybody talked with everybody. We shared stories. We shared about our lives, um, whatever we needed help on. We asked for advice and, um, we did a live from there. Mike did a live from there, which um, was actually, Mike, I knew you were doing a live, but I did not know it was going to be just you and me. So that caught me off guard. But um, I was ready because I got my power nap, um, which uh, when we went up there, by the time we had gotten there to Mike, I had gotten, um, by the time the live happened, I had been running off of two and a half hours of sleep. So I was up over 24 hours um, when we got there, when we pulled in. So luckily I got a two and a half hour uh, power nap. And um, yeah, two and a half hour power nap and we did the live. And yeah, that, that was funny. Um, when Mike did this live, you guys can't tell, but there was at least... 10 people behind the camera, but nobody was saying a word. And as soon as the live went off, everybody started talking and laughing again, which cracked me up. I was like, wow, it's, it's awful quiet for all these people to be here. And it almost looked like there was nobody there because of how quiet it was. But I mean, as you can see from the thumbnail, that was half of the, about half of the people sitting around the fire pit. Um, that was there while we were doing the live. So that was uh, that was pretty funny that they all, as soon as it went live, they were all psh, quiet, instant silence, instant. And then as soon as it went off, everyone went right back to laughing and joking and, and um, BSing. And those of you guys that do not um, know Livingston Man, or even if you do, that man is just as funny in real life as he is on that camera. He had some jokes that they were hilarious and not everybody got them, but they were hilarious. So if you all ever get a chance to meet that man as well, he will make you laugh no matter what. He is just as funny off camera as he is on camera. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I, I don't know how that man is so quick witted. I would love that. He is just instant. Sarcasm is great. I loved it. Um, let me see. Okay. So then, um, that I, uh, let me see if I missed anything other than the last night, which I'm going to talk about, um, some really cool stuff that I got. But I want to make sure I didn't miss. Did I miss anything that um, that I might have forgot, Mike, about the trip, other than how amazing everyone was? Going through some of these messages. 
Um, Greenleaf said, it was nothing really. It's all in the mind and body. Attitude helps. Uh, your mind and body is definitely better than mine because that cold would have hit me and I would have been calling me an Uber. Brisket was awesome. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Okay, so um, the food truck was there um, Friday night as well. So he was there Friday night and Saturday. And he was there Sunday morning actually cooking breakfast too, but we missed breakfast because we're not morning people. But um, I know he was there doing breakfast too. Lots of people saying brisket was amazing. I didn't get to do the brisket. Um, but a lot of people had it and it looked and smelt so good. Um, sounded like a summer camp for adults. That is exactly what it was, except for nobody swam in a lake. It was way too damn cold. Way too cold. I froze that that second night. You could see your breath. Easy. And then we woke up to some rain. It started raining um, lightly, but enough to chill you to the bone. Um, any bourbon? Uh, I cannot confirm or deny that, BP. I'm not going to incriminate myself on that one. He's known by angry pre prepper as Steve the lightning guy. I can see that. Is it because of how quick he cooks? Because he sure whipped all that up pretty darn fast. Um, yep. Livingston man is hilarious. Yeah. Mickwick. I'm going to talk about these Mickwicks. Those things, those are amazing. Any animals. Thank you. Thank you, Vision. Actually, you reminded me. Um, coyotes, which is why my dogs could not go. There was numerous packs, but there was one monster pack that was on the mountain across from us. And they were so loud. Um, my husband actually has a video looking at the fire where you can hear the coyotes. I might upload that on a short just so you guys can hear the coyotes. But it was pretty incredible because that group of coyotes would start um, howling at the moon, which was also beautiful, by the way. That's um, I stole Mike's picture and put it in my thumbnail. That was the moon um, that night. Um, but the coyotes would start on the mountain, mountain across from us. And then there was also a pack that was right behind our campsite. So as soon as the ones in front of us would go, it would be like rolling waves of howls from the coyotes because as this main one would start, all the smaller ones would follow suit. So it would be howling literally all the way around the campsite, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I'm just glad they stayed their distance. Yep, learning more about herbs. Um, I did, and I thank you for uh, Michelle the Great. She supplied me with some herbs that I have not been able to get a hold of because they've been sold out. And I thank you, uh, Michelle, if you're here. I know I know you're at work, but I don't know if you're listening, so I want to thank you for the gifts. And um, she gave me some uh, oils for uh, herbal, er, herbal remedies. <coughs> and um, I thank you for that. I thank um, also Old Mutt for the gifts. Uh, Outlaw Jackson, Mike, um, thank all of you guys very, very much for um, for giving us gifts when we got there. wasn't expected at all. Um, it, it's it's definitely not what we went up there for, but we are eternally grateful. Um, coyotes are serious at the Hornets' nest. Yes, they were everywhere, everywhere. Um, would not. It's great to meet some of the people. Great connections. Definitely a great way to network if you're trying to network. The Coyote Lullaby is worth the trip. It was. I We actually, last night, because we were by ourselves after everyone left, we were all like really quiet listening to the, to the coyotes. It was cool. Uh, I am not. Um, coyotes are not good to eat. They are very bad to eat. I, I think I would probably have to um, eat some trees before I, some acorns and such, before I eat some coyotes. 
Go West. I can't do cold anymore, and I can't e either. I think I was the only Eskimo-looking person up there with how bundled up I was. Um, I had uh, T-shirts and uh, hoodies and my jacket and um, Outlaw Jackson's gloves that he gave me, and I sat like this most of the time trying to stay warm with my feet, uh, not at the fire, but in the fire because I could not feel my toes at one point. They were so darn cold. Um, Flexil will keep the adult diapers dry. Okay. Uh, hmm. I have to remember that. I love the backdrop. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So when I got home after unpacking, some um, laid down for 30 minutes, bent my knees to get up, and instant full leg cramp both legs. I could not walk. Um, Stick man it up to my bottle of CBD, one shot, and it went away. That's really awesome. That's good. I'm really glad that that works well for you. Uh, we need to get you a heating pad and some sort uh, of some sort to keep warm. I actually have a heating pad that I keep at home, um, but I definitely needed something there, uh, more portable, so that I wasn't frozen. Let's see. Let's see. What state was this in? Uh, Go West. It was in New York. Um, it was up, up, way up, close to Canada uh, in New York, uh, where it's, I think if I would have went probably a couple miles north, it probably would have hit some glaciers because it was darn cold. Uh, upstate New York. Outlaw. Outlaw, you will always be a huge part of our lives. And it started with you giving me your gloves, <laughs> which I'm grateful for because I could feel my fingers all night. Slept like a baby. Oh, you just reminded me. Okay. Um, actually, I did not hear anything either because uh, somebody came to the camp and my husband and I are not morning people, but somebody came to the camp in the morning and started uh, yelling that they had donuts and um, trying to wake the Southerners up. And these Southerners did not hear a peep. We slept very well. That mountain air put us right to sleep and kept us to sleep. Okay, so his events, guys. Let me tell you, if you, first of all, if I can drive, my husband and I, I didn't do it by myself can drive a thousand miles. Any one of you can make a trip up there because I guarantee 99.9% .9 of you are probably closer than I am. And that trip driving a thousand miles was worth it. It is going to be one of the last memories if we ever lose our memory that we will forget because it made such a huge impact on us. So if you can ever, ever get up to one of Hudson Valley's events, and he posts them on the Facebook page. He has a Facebook page where he talks about the events coming up. And he also has them on his YouTube channel uh, when he has events coming up. I highly suggest that you guys at least make one of these events once in your lifetime because it is worth it all the way around. You will never, ever regret any bit of it. Even if you have to go up for a day, go up for a day. Oh, Catskill Prepper. That was another one who, who showed up, who came up, um, down there while we were down there. Uh, she made a trip as well to go down there and spend some time with us. Um, and um, you got to make the trip. You got to do it at least once. That's all I'm asking you guys, at least once. Um, now, I am still very far behind, but I'm going to try to skip ahead because I don't want to keep you guys... Um, Um, Livingston, I cannot talk about that because we try to not advertise, um, our bug out vehicle. Um, so we try not to share any more than we have to, but you could call it a Batmobile. Hudson, it was an honor being up there. And... Uh, let's see. Okay. So here's what I want to talk about. 
actually, I want to talk about a few things. One of the things that I got up there, um, which I'm so glad that this was given because um, I'm lazy and this has everything all together in one. But somebody up there gave me a, um, a fire starter, a, a fire starter kit that has um, pretty much all weather in it. And it's got the lighter, it's got the um, ferro rod, it's got stormproof matches, which I knew there was waterproof um, matches and I knew there was windproof, but this, this stormproof has um, 25 matches in the box, which my husband and I have not seen them without many matches in the box and the lighter, and it's got the char cloth, um, which is really great. But what I really want to talk about, because this saved my toes from falling off, this is an old mutt custom. That's really cool. This, I love this. The only thing that's missing is the magnifying glass, which I'm going to stick in there. Old school. Okay, so let me tell you guys about these fire starters. These are who sponsored um, Mike's Hudson Valley's uh, events, Mickwick. I highly suggest you guys get these in your kits. Um, these things, they're, they're little tiny. They look like candles. And I was kind of disappointed they weren't scented because they all look, as you can see, they look like different candle scents. Um, but we cracked some jokes about it. But they're like ice cube size, um, teeny tiny. And... I just got something thrown at me. Mike, you'll like this. Outlaw Jackson, you'll like this too. I've got your shirt. I know you're loving that. It just came flying across the room at me. Yeah, so mickwickfires.com. <laughs> Outlaw's going to check out now since we have his shirt. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so these, these Mickwicks. Um, usually, whenever my husband and I go camping, one of us starts messing with the fire and the other one starts setting up. And um, it takes time to set these fires up, to get the fires going. This little thing, which is amazing, you light it and you set your wood over it and you just leave it alone. You just walk away and you set up whatever you need to set up, whether it be um, your tent or uh, whatever. I can't even think right now, but um, you literally just put it under the wood. And Mike said, if the, if the wood is wet, you use two of them. Um, I remember that because it rains so much here and I was making a point to remember that. So you put two of these under the wood if it's wet and one if it's dry, um, dry and seasoned and light it walk away in about 15 minutes it lit lit the logs on fire we had the fire in the fire pit already going just by lighting one of these and walking away and um they come in different packs um this pack is uh two four six pack and then I'm going to show y'all. They come in oh, two packs if you want the smaller set. Or if you want to roll like the big dogs, you can get a whole container. So definitely look into them. These were absolutely amazing. And while I was sitting by the fire the last night, I actually made up my own jingle. But I cannot think of it right now. But it was pretty darn funny, and it was all about thank you, Mickwick, for saving my toes from falling off. Um, because it took one, and the fire stayed lit. You just it started the two logs, and then you keep doing um, like you normally would to keep the fire going. And then Mike gave us the Hudson Valley patch, which you can see it. It's a terrible glare. I'm sorry. And then 
I have the Livingston patch. Yay! Kind of looks like a spaceman, but he's in a bee suit. So if y'all don't know, that's a bee suit, not an astronaut suit. But anyways, we have these awesome things to put on our jackets, which um, I also got a jacket while I was up there um, or on your backpack or wherever you put your patches, wherever you put your patches. Um, I'm actually thinking about starting to collect patches since uh, there's some really cool ones out there. And uh, as we go to events, we might be able to collect more and add. We used to collect shot glasses, but I think uh, we may have to change to patches because they're so much cooler. And um, you can advertise other cool sites. So if you haven't subscribed to um, Hudson Valley Prepping and Survival, please go check him out. Um, and also Livingston. These two together are flipping hilarious. They cracked me up the whole time. They cracked me up on their videos. They cracked me up in real life. Um, I don't know what the heck Livingston drinks uh, to have his energy, but I definitely need some because it is never ending. Um, there's also a coffee place. Um, I can't remember what it's called, um, but there's also a coffee place that, uh, Mike found out there's a, a, a channel and they have cannoli flavored coffee. So I know if you're on my channel, you're probably a coffee drinker because, um, we talk about coffee sometimes and, uh, definitely I'll find out where the coffee place is and share the link. But I definitely am going to have to order some coffee from them because, um, and espresso beans. They have chocolate covered espresso beans, which mm, those are really good. Uh, if you haven't had those, I know they sound weird. Uh, Utica Coffee Company. Thank you, Mike. Utica Coffee Com Company. I need more coffee. Um, check them out because they have uh, different flavors of coffees and they have uh, chocolate covered espresso beans. Um, <laughs> Uh, Armageddon Preparedness said that he needs your cannoli coffee, Mike, that you need to give it up. Okay, let me see. I don't know. Yeah, Chris says uh, he bleeds coffee. Us too. I do not talk to anyone before at least two cups of coffee in the morning. I need my coffee. I don't function. So. And Mike's events, you guys, too, are free. What we did do is he puts out a donation jar because the person um, that owns the property um, that pretty much gives us free range to hang out there with Mike, um, he doesn't charge Mike anything. So to put a jar out to collect donations for the owner it helps him out a lot to be able to keep the place going and available for us. And um, there's a bathroom in a building there with electricity if you need to use the restroom. So it helps pay that bill with all that traffic um, going through there, uh, pay the light bill in that building. Um, so we all pitched in a good bit of money uh, to, to raise a good bit of money, I mean, um, for future. But it, it's not a requirement. It's just a kind thing to do. Um, but as far as the event itself, it doesn't cost anything. Um, but it's a, it's a lifetime experience, a lifetime experience. Yes. I'm so grateful to have y'all in my family too. Absolutely. Are there any questions that I can answer or any of these guys can answer because there's a good bit of people in the chat that were there um, that could answer some questions that I may not be able to, but I tried to answer as many as I could and tell you a lot about the trip. Um, oh, going back. So someone said, I bet um, they bet that we didn't take the same route back and we did not. Uh, we put the GPS in to go back and uh, try to reroute to go a different way, reroute to go a different way, because every single way it tried to take us was back down that parkway. And 
we were not going to take the chance. We already got lucky once. We were not going to take the chance again. So we had to um, drive to Catskill, New York, the city, and then put the home coordinates in just to get it to stop taking us um, to the parkway. But it suggested, they suggested, Catskill Prepper actually suggested, and um, I think Outlaw suggested, Mike suggested that we actually drive through the Catskill Mountains anyways, because they are beautiful. And they're right, hands down, they are absolutely gorgeous. And we got a picture of the Hudson River where um, Outlaw Jackson can teach you how to find Hudson uh, River lobster. Um, he has a video of catching two of them, in case y'all didn't know that they exist there. You got to touch base with him and he'll tell you how to find them. Um, and maybe if you come out there one of these times to his events, he can actually um, show you how to find them. So um, if you're ever curious, ask him. There's lobsters in the Hudson River. Uh, $300 they raised. $300 they raised for Bob, the owner of the property, which I think is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, no tectonic. Yeah, I, I did that once, Lucky. I'm not doing that again. Rock Chick Beauty, hi, love. You have to go back and watch. We just came back from a trip to New York. It was our very first trip um, ever to New York, and we went way deep into New York. Um, it was amazing. And also, you can find pictures. Uh, the Facebook group has tons of pictures on it uh, of this trip. If you guys want to see some pictures, uh, Hudson Valley Prepping and Survival's Facebook group, not my Facebook page, but Hudson's Facebook page. And you can see all the different pictures of uh, the barbecue, the campsite, the fire, um, people just getting together um, and just being family, just being family. When is the next projected Prepa Yacht Sale for those that are interested in attending? I think I did that pretty good. Use a trucker GPS next time. I don't have a trucker GPS. I might have to get one though, because that was uh, definitely no warning. And all of a sudden I was on that exit. So Hudson Valley is going to have another in-person event in spring. And if I remember correctly, it's gonna be in the same location. So I can vouch that it is absolutely stunning, stunning out there. New Yorkistan. Deep behind the enemy lines in the People Republic of New Yorkistan. Yes. Oh, ways. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Man. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. I should have totally pulled up ways. I haven't used Waze for years. Marco's asking if you're going to do it in January. I still use a map and compass. Do they still sell maps? I'm just kidding. We have some for our area. Just kidding. All right, so I don't see any more questions. Um, please, if you have not hit the thumbs up, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Um, if you can, share this out because I would love, love, love to see more people at this event because you won't regret it. You just won't regret it. You, there's so many things you'll learn and so many people you'll meet and so many friendships that you'll make. Hopefully in November, New York will no longer be no longer a stand. Um, Vision, Mike wants you to let them know the date so that they can, so that they do not collide um, because he wants to come up to the next one. Oh, now the chat's moving. Hold on. I'm going faster than I'm clicking. Um, like this video was titled y'all gonna die or something yeah we all gonna die wednesdays i think this wednesday what did what did um i said it was gonna be the oarfish 
he does a series, if y'all don't know, because of all the chaos in the world of um, everyone saying we're going to die from this, we're going to die from that. Mike does a series on Wednesdays called We All Gonna Die Wednesday. And it is funny. Um, he picks what we're going to die from that week. And uh, it's it's quite hilarious. You'll see him and Livingston, man, having friendly banter back and forth. And um, hopefully not do anything or say anything to get their stream cut off in the middle because that's happened a couple times. Um, but it's definitely a good laugh. Operation Pocketbook. Yes, thank you. Um, Operation Pocketbook for standing up for freedom of speech. Um, all the prepper channels and anyone else who wants to join are going to log out. Um, even if you don't have a channel, log out of your social media um, October 31st at midnight until November 1st at midnight. So the entire day of October 31st, um, log out of all of your social media because we want to put a dent in the pocketbooks of um, all the big channels that are silencing people that are trying to get truth out there, um, trying to <clears throat> help people out there. Um, so log out completely. Don't just not go on, but log out because if you log out, you will put a huge dent um, in their pocketbook if we all band together and do it in the same day. It's called, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Operation Pocketbook. Oh, look, it's 3G. I've renamed you. You're 3G now. I'm not going to say why, but you're 3G now. But I'm glad you're here. This man, right here got a free hug from me <laughs> but i don't mind because i'm a hugger all right so something in january for the extreme guys and girls i will not be in the january one i am not an extreme nope unless you're gonna have a um like a huge heater i can just stand in front of 3g yep that's his new name um Let's see. As soon as I know you all, I um, as soon as I know you all will know. So yeah, keep track of Mike's uh, live streams and his Facebook page, and he will update as soon as he does his uh, his events, and he does more than one a year. LG Halloween. Yep, yep, yep. I don't see any more questions. Let me see. Drive safely, Hudson. Mike, please drive safely. Alexandra the Great. What's up? I'm in the car driving. Everybody's in the car driving. Maybe I should have done this live stream from the car. I want to be with the in crowd. Let's see. I think I think that's about it. Yep. Um, VP is um, going over to his live stream right now. Thank you, um, Vision, for moderating. Thank you, Mike, for moderating. Thank you, Emma Marco, for moderating. Uh, Tarsha, if you're still in here, thank you, Hun, for moderating. Um, 3G, we're going to have to um, chat more now that you know I've renamed you. Free hugs. Well, if you were... Um, in around me when I was in my hugging mood, I hugged a whole bunch of people. I love giving hugs. I have no issues hugging people. Unless unless y'all are smelly. But then it has to be after a camping trip. And then I'm smelly too, so I won't smell it. Okay. So I don't see any more questions. I tried to give as much um, info about the trip as possible. You guys, please make it. Um, at least one time in your life. Follow Mike at Hudson Valley uh, Prepping and Survival. He will tell you when the next ones are. Definitely put these in your survival packs, your prepping packs, your camping bags, your camping totes, whatever. They are worth it. There's nothing like being able to light one, put your wood on it, and walk away um, and get your other stuff put together and having a full-blown fire. If you don't follow Livingston, follow Livingston. He is hilarious. He just did a hunting, uh, spam hunting video that was, oh man, hands down, one of the best ones I've seen. Go check that out. Um, I should have probably warned my mods that I was going to drop that video uh, ahead of time. But if they don't get the link in here, definitely go to Livingston's page. Check out his spam hunting video. Hands down, 
hilarious. Definitely got some anger out on that uh, for you. Yes, any platform that does not stand for free speech, log out on the 31st of October. All right, so I guess that is it, you guys. I'm going to jump over and moderate for um, vision preparedness. Um, and I can't think of anything else, but I am going to go back and get some of these links that I talked about in the description. It probably just won't be tonight, but I will try to get them in there as soon as possible. And um, that's about it. Be safe, stay warm, um, keep prepping, network, meet friends, meet family. God bless. Mwah.